What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore Project Ozone 3 episode 6 and we're just coming in at the end of the process as I mentioned uh, that is the ash set up there just want to make sure I've got plenty to go ahead I know I'm going to need a couple of stacks of ash to do the glimmering crystal but that's all I'm planning on using it for so just chucking in some cobblestone there and that would be pretty much done all it needs is any junk um, you can put valuable stuff in there as well, so be careful. Um, but I'm using cobblestone. It then burns it down using embers into the ash. And I want, like I say, two or three stacks. Should be more than enough to do the glimmering crystal. Because it's only one craft that we need to do it, I believe. Hopefully by then we'll have one of the waystones or something that we can teleport there without having to use it each time. Though the waystones do use experience. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe and share like if you like. It does help me out. I appreciate that I am new. Uh, I've actually been going a year on the 5th of August. Now I've got 6,000-ish subs, I believe, something like that. Um, and I hope it's going okay. I don't know, obviously. The, the algorithm doesn't like me much, it seems. All my videos just aren't up to speed or par for you guys. But if that is the case, please do let me know. I'm just going to put a box around this to try and clean it up and then I can put a hopper down that auto collects them because it's it's a bit slow and I'm not going to stand there and watch it. I also finish off the expectus which is just put in a gold nugget with some molten dawn stone in the smeltery. Nice and simple just to finish off that quest. Uh, I don't know. Yes, I will need them again when I do the glimmer, glimmering crystal later on. But for now, we're good to move on. So I've managed to get some hemp seeds, and I'm going to start multiplying those. I was going to do crop sticks and breed them up, but I thought there's no point. All I need to do is let them grow, break them to get extra seeds, and build up. I want crop. I want the hemp because I want to make the hemp into the cloth, and then the cloth into the windmills for power. So my main sort of early game power, and that's electricity power. I want to do with a water wheel from immersive engineering which is just treated wood um, and then probably two or three of those in a bit of water will give us probably sort of 10 to 15 RF a tick um, and then from there we'll get into the windmills which requires a lot of hemp still treated wood but a lot of hemp and I mean a lot of hemp uh, you then make the windmills and set those up. You can then upgrade the windmills to have sails using even more hemp. So that's why I'm making sure to get as much hemp as possible. Uh, putting down grass with the hoe and then using that to gather it to try and make sure I've got as many seeds as possible. Also, it doesn't hurt to have other seeds. Um, so for now, this little water source and a bit of a farm just in case I want to grow the odd thing, including carrots. Um, as I said, that is a quest in itself. Not too difficult. You grow the carrots, then you have to grow them on ores, which we won't really be having ores until, uh, I think, probably the nether, where you collect the nether ores, and then you can cut them into the normal ores. Uh, and then after that, you grow them on the solid block. So you grow the carrots on like a diamond block, and you get the high-end carrot. Not sure if I'll use them. I'm pretty confident that unless there's the top-end carrot, which I think is called a 48 carrot carrot yeah lots of carrots um they're probably better than the notch apples the gold block apples but they require nether stars i think so that's a bit excessive so let's do our trusty friend which is the engineer's hammer and we're doing a, a immersive engineering next the first thing really in immersive engineering you would build i would expect is the coke oven the coke oven turns wood into charcoal and gives you creosote. The charcoal is then used eventually in the furnace to make steel from iron. And the creosote is used to turn wood into treated wood, which is where a lot of the items that we require are needed for for the windmills, for the water wheels, for the power, basically. Uh, and anything sort of immersive engineering-ish as a mod. So a lot of clay later, we now have the 27 blocks, three layers of nine that you require. So you just build them three by three, nice and simple, and then right click in the center of where you want the face of the multi-block to be. And that is a coke oven. So all we have to do now is feed it wood. 
And that's not planks, I don't believe it. It's just literally the wood. There we go. That will turn it into charcoal and creosote. Now it is a bit slow. Um, so I say it's slow. It's slow when you first want it, but then once you set it up and you leave it alone, all of a sudden you realize that you've got too much creosote, or at least that's what happens to me. The creosote is a liquid, so make sure you can get a tank or two as soon as possible to try and keep it from stopping because as soon as the creosote is full or it's full with charcoal, it will stop. And it's another machine that you can quite easily automate. The furnace, on the other hand, isn't. You can't automate the first version. You can only automate the blast furnace, but we're a bit away from that as yet, so I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, just going through the chest, look for anything that's rubbish that I can probably bin. And by bin, I mean, of course, throw it into the abyss of space. In the background, you can see where I've put it. And obviously, all of the embers items have been broken down, including the lava pit that was around that copper block, which is why you saw lava there dissipating into the void. None of the buildings, you can see there in my inventory, none of them have been deleted or thrown away all of them are being saved just in case we will need them in the future for the glimmering crystal but for now uh, i need the space for more permanent things like what's going to be on that platform is the coke oven the furnace for steel and of course then the smeltery uh, once we get there or get that built the smeltery will be moved there as well because it's going to be a lot larger than that small one you can see there on the left that's technically only one block high so it only does like six at a time but it's working and it works. Got a lot of this ash now and a lot more than I need actually. And I'm thinking you can actually turn it into ashen brick. And that looks quite nice if you then slab it into tiles. So I'm wondering about getting I'm gonna I'm getting very close to doing quite a large well for me a lot you see you see I just got shot at through the mob thing. Um, quite a large change to the base, and that is that I'm going to rip up these. The tiles will probably stay the same, but I want to do some sort of something along the lines of the the chunks. And I'm likely going to use that Ashton brick as the outline so that it's these smooth tiles all over, and then they're surrounded by the Ashton brick to show the grid. And we'll see how that looks. Comments are always welcome. Ideas are also welcome. Uh, I've never really had to build for other people before, so you'll have to bear with me. But we'll get there. Also, instead of having an overly complicated like cross pattern with different island, like different patterns, these little islands on the end, I'd rather just build out the whole thing and make it one big nice platform that I can have different areas of, um, so there's no random gaps or wasted space in between. As long as I've got the resources to do it now in terms of the ashton you can see there i've got two four six six stacks of that which is more than enough and to be honest it's re really really easy just chuck a little more cobblestone in the machine and and do it but we'll have to wait and see what that looks like before i actually make the decision on whether that's what i'm going to do or not so i finally made a cake Obviously, the passive mobs, as I said, work nicely. Chickens for eggs, cows for milk. Just need some more obsidian to wrap around the cake. And, of course, that then makes the nether cake. This nether cake, which is charged up with obsidian, and I'm excited there again, allows us to travel to the nether. Now, before you can get to the nether, though, so I can put this cake down. Obviously, it'll be small. Uh, now, if I click on that, once I've charged it, it will allow me to go to the nether in theory, but it won't yet because we need to unlock the nether. To do so, you need to have the flint and steel. Now, it's strange because I've always thought, well, how do I get the steel? Because I haven't yet unlocked the blast furnace. But there is actually another item that allows you to make steel really early on. And that is a crude hammer, I think it's called. The first thing you need to make is hardened stone. So clay, sand, iron, stone. That makes hardened stone, as you can see there on that recipe. It makes four of. Cobblestone. 
can't remember how many I needed, so I made eight. You then cook that. Or smelt that. What is it? Cook? Uh, yeah, cook's fine. And there you can see the stone hammer, the hardened stone hammer. So that is the cooked hardened stone that we just made. Three string, two sticks. Which we're just putting that in the, in the furnace now. So hopefully that's... Yes, we only need two of those. So over to here and we'll make that. No, we haven't got enough string. There we go. So over here we can make that. Now with that hammer, all we need is iron. Coal and iron, which, I mean, carbon. It's carbon and iron, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, carbon and iron with, the with, the, with this new stone hammer and we should get... Steel, if I can remember the recipe, and there it is. Six coal, two iron makes two steel. We now have steel. So one steel and one flint makes the steel and flint. Obviously, the recipe's changed because normally it's just iron, right? But in the expert packs, it's always actually steel. Mix those two together. That will make that, and nether is unlocked. Now we can use the cake and travel to the nether. We have our sword. You've got to be careful these aren't demon cows. We have our sword, uh, our apples, food, various other things. I think the first thing to do when you go to the netherite is to make sure that you are prepared. Also, just to get there, load it, see where you actually spawn into, and then have a look around for probably building yourself a bit of a wall around it. Um, it's not as, or at least this time, it's not as dangerous as when we went to, or when I go into the hunting dimension, because that's just swarming with uh, mobs, of course, because that's what it's for. But you could get spawned into a really dangerous place with lava and all sorts of things happening, or even nether brick that's on fire that never goes out. So it's always a good idea to uh, be prepared. And the reason I mentioned being prepared is because I wasn't. I took the cake, the overworld cake, but when you put it down, it's not charged, and to charge it, you need saplings, overworld saplings, and I didn't have any. So what I had to do, like an idiot, was kill things until I got the loot bags. Uh, within the loot bags, I finally got some saplings. I used the saplings to charge the overworld cake, and now I've finally made my way back home. So it took a whole like in-game day of just killing random stuff. Obviously not touching the pigmen because then they'll have all attacked me. So farming spy spiders mainly and opening loot bags, which is why you saw all of that loot extra that I had was just I was chucking it on the floor because I couldn't find any other to chuck it in. And you can see there's more loot bags here. Now there are these um, enchanted tablets of home that would have worked as well, but I'm not sure if they actually take me to the respawn point here as in my home base, or the respawn point of the dimension that you're in. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter because I was, I knew that I could get saplings from uh, loot bags, and the, the low-level loot bags as well, so it's not like they're actually rare. Um, I think it took five. I think it was the fifth one I opened. I got um, a sapling. But we're back now, and now I know that when I go back to take a load of saplings with me, but we also have the... The waystones now, which use three levels of experience, and you can trans uh, teleport backwards and forwards as you wish. Uh, later on, of course, we'll have proper teleporters that it will be infinite for us with some... I can't remember, draconium stuff that allows you to teleport quite easily. If we even need to go there, because other than cobalt and ardite to make the purple stuff... Um, I'm not too worried. Plus, now we've got so much the the, the, nether, the nether rack itself, and we can of course smash that with a hammer and sieve it. We can get all of that without even going back there. So, two birds, one stone. But at least we've unlocked it. We've got it. We know that our teleport through to that is reasonably safe, um, and we now have another dimension unlocked. Now, of course, for the automation of the sieving setup, I have by now, of course, managed to get the odd end uh, pearl, 
which means I can make this advanced collector, which isn't too expensive once you've got ender pearls. It's also very good because it doesn't necessarily let the items load. It instantly just catches them to save on lag. This means now when the sib works, anything that it shakes out will be collected regardless of where it lands within 10 blocks of itself. They will then go into the chests. It'll be a lot cleaner. We won't be wasting any resources and we can obviously ramp up the volume going through it now. You can see that we have a lot of these items that we need to combine. Obviously, this dust stuff, you need to do two by two to make four to make a chunk. The chunk then turns into an ingot or can be doubled if you use a smeltery or any other doubling process, to be honest, including furnaces with the upgrades. Um, but that's becoming a bit monotonous as well. I want to be able to automate that as well soon. Um, and then once it's automated, so they turn into chunks... It's then very easy using pipes or hoppers to pump them straight in the chunk straight into a furnace. And we basically, we've automated the sifting all the way through to an actual ingot. So I just spent the last like 20 minutes going through all of the parts and combining them into chunks. And then all the chunks have been put into the chest next to the furnace to be auto cooked down. Uh, that allows the sieve to continue to run and it's got an empty chest to of course put other things in just throwing away a bit of garbage that i was left over because it's getting a bit messy you can see now the furnace is going to just go through all of them chunks and there's lots of them cut them down into their retrospective finger put them in the chest at the bottom and then when i've get a chance i can shove them into our storage again another massive dose of resources to the Team. Now, this is why we couldn't do the furnace up until now, because we needed nether brick, which is netherrack cooked. We now have that. So, netherrack cooked into nether brick, and clay cooked into brick. Um, and then you surround that with blaze powder, and you get the blocks we need, the, the furnace blocks. We need 27 as before. Three levels of nine, and then you click in the center, and it makes you your furnace. I'm not sure what I'm missing. Go to rack. I'm going to put them in here actually because they stack nicely, and it's a good idea to try and use them when I need them instead of holding on to them. You can use them for other resources, not not normal resources, but more fancy resources. The sword though that you can get from them that I think I need to kill like, or I need it need 200 blaze rods or something. Um, is quite significant. So yeah, we can go over to the nether again. Let it load in. Just make sure that the pigment aren't aggroed on me before I start doing anything because they auto aggro. And of course we are back with that now. And all I was doing that for was because I used all of the nether rack we originally got to crush down and using the sieve. Uh, you can't obviously uh, cook that compre uh, smashed up stuff. So I've now gone and got a load more. Just vain mind once. That was enough. Straight back. And you can see there we've got it cooking up. So with that, once it's done, we obviously need 27, I think it is. So... Is it 27? Can't remember. We need a set amount anyway. Uh, we've got the other bricks, the standard bricks. We've got the blaze powder. We're just waiting on those nether ones. And then we will be looking at getting a load of steel in, which means that we can upgrade maybe some of our weapons and maybe even look into tinkers if we've got time. But in the meantime, I'm going to start turning this brick into the Ashton brick now. Plenty of stone has been cooked in the meantime, so it's good to go. We can then compress it down into the tile-looking things and look like the final stage that I mentioned where I'm going to hopefully use the checkered base to um, match the chunks and then outline them with these fancy bricks, keeping the same tiles in the middle. That will be quite a lot of work for me and we'll skip to that for the next episode so please don't forget to subscribe to come back to that thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like and the comments are welcome as always like if you like take care goodbye